All right, so let's talk about the top toolbar. So we've already discussed this uh, left and right toolbar, um, but let's look at this top toolbar. So one of the things that you'll notice, we have a menu up at the very, very top, um, and this menu is a little bit different than any other software that you've used before, uh, whereas the majority of softwares start with file and edit on this left-hand side, uh, but you'll find that file and edit are uh, further over in your menu because this menu uh, is in alphabetical order. So just keep that in mind whenever you're using ZBrush. There's lots of pull downs here and you can see when you click on each one of these um, that they have lots and lots of information uh, and uh, we will look at some of those a little bit later but I want to show you a nice little feature with ZBrush uh, because you notice whenever you click on one of these menus and you mouse off of it, it disappears. So one of the nice features about ZBrush is you can tear off all of these menus uh, and, and kind of float them into different palettes here. So if you, on the very far left hand side, you'll see a little double arrow. If I click that, you'll see that I have a new palette opens up. And this one says um, has brushes in it. Uh, if we come over to this little circle with an arrow, you'll see our cursor changes to a uh, quad, looks like quad arrows. If you left click and drag over into your canvas area and let go, you can see that that menu has disappeared. So it's not gone for good. Uh, we can grab that anytime we want to. That was our brush palette. So if I click on brush here, you'll see here's that little icon again. If I grab that and drag it over to this little palette and let go, it will now populate that little side palette with that set of brushes. So I can do this with any, so if I go to, let's get preferences, click and drag. So now all my preferences are over here to the side and I can work on these. Now I can continue to just drag and drop uh, brush or any of these uh, menus and we can stack them but the the issue you run into is um, just having everything on the screen is, is very very confusing uh, something else that you might run into is uh, you might have especially over on this right hand side where your tool palette um, is you might come to a situation where you know your tools are out here but you can't see them okay the first thing you want to do is uh, mouse over the negative area here in this palette left click and drag down and do that a couple of times and if nothing shows up then that palette's empty but if you click and drag you'll see that these kind of slide back into uh, view uh, and also you see the little double arrows here if we double click those we can close out to get more screen real estate here so again it depends on how you like to work um, I rarely use this left hand menu uh, this uh, left hand palette just because I like more screen space and I've become kind of accustomed to having all of my stuff on the left hand side uh, and you also have this feature at the bottom as well so uh, I'm going to show you later on how to create custom palettes and so when you start up you'll have like uh, all the key features you use all the time um, around your palette so you don't have to go digging for them or around your uh, yeah around your palette okay so back up here to the top uh, again you can open all of these you can tear these off put them on the side uh, and I'm not going to go over all of these different features because um, they're just too much uh, for um, beginners uh, and it's overwhelming uh, but the things you do need to know again home page I click that it pulls up that home page if I click light box this gives me a bunch of standard uh, objects that we can work on live bullying we're going to talk about that later it's very powerful uh, and, and we're going to do a lot with that this semester uh, next up we have edit remember if we click edit Right, as of right now we turn this off this will become a flat object so I'm going to click that um, and it's uh, currently in 3D if you want to uh, switch to 2.5D 
if we hit, it's giving us the option here because it, it knows that this is possibly an accident. So if we hit switch, do not switch, or always switch, uh, if I hit always switch, that's going to turn this menu off so that if um, we do this accidentally again, it's just going to automatically kick it into 2.5D. So I'm going to hit switch. And so now you'll see, again, we can pull and do that same thing we had before. Let's go ahead and hit Control N so it clears the space. Click and drag and then hit edit and now it's 3D again. Okay, That is something you really need to get used to is the Control N and making sure things are in edit. Uh, next up we have draw. This is our sculpting tools. So uh, like for instance right now it's set on move if I come over here and pull, you can see that I can just pull the surface and manipulate it. Control Z allows me to undo. But also, if you notice just below Lightbox and Live Bullying, there's a bunch of little tabs here. There's a, a bunch of little black tabs. And this one's lit up orange. So this is the state of our undos. And we can click on those and kind of travel back in time or uh, forward. Okay, so uh, as of right now, uh, I just have a move tool. So let's change this because I know everyone wants to get into this. So click brush and I'm going to clay build up. So C and then we're going to find clay. Where's my clay build up? There, clay build up. And so now you'll see brush is clay build up, stroke is current uh, freehand and then our alpha is a square so now if we come over to our object and click and drag you can see that we can start to sculpt on our object okay so um, we'll get into the sculpting a little bit later I just want to show you that as that tool next tool over is move so if I click move, we have a little gizmo that pops up. And even though we have move, scale, and rotate, all you have to do is click on one of these and this gizmo pops up and the gizmo by itself allows us to do all of those functions. So move, ooh, okay. So the reason that is happening is because we have our symmetry turned on. Um, we'll talk about symmetry a little bit later. Uh, but for now, just be aware that if you hit the X key, uh, it will turn symmetry on and off. And so now um, with the symmetry turned off, you see it doesn't uh, do that crazy distortion. So if I click on any of these little arrows, so this is my X, Y, and Z. So when we have more objects in the scene, you will see uh, what I'm talking about. Um, so, but this allows you to move this object in space. Then um, we have these little circles around the object. So if I click on this circle and it highlights, left click, lets me rotate the object. So this is not to be confused with clicking to the outside. This clicking to the outside and rotating is rotating the camera around the object this feature is rotating the object in the three-dimensional world okay so we're rotating across the Z this is rotating around the X this is rotating around the Y this little white circle rotates around the camera axis so uh, if we uh, think about our camera facing this object and there's a little Think about a little beam that comes out of the, the middle of the camera lens and touches our object at this point. This circle is rotating around that beam. Okay, Be careful with that because it can get confusing. Um, the next are the little white triangles. This lets us kind of move this again in parallel to the camera lens. And then we have some features up here that we will talk about. Um, this is our transform panel uh, um, objects. We'll talk about these a little bit later. All right, back up to the main menu. We have Gizmo 3D. If 
we turn that off, we go back to ZBrush's original old school um, menu or uh, manipulator, the gizmo, and I'm not a huge fan of it. It is very powerful, but um, it takes a little bit of time to get used to. Uh, when I, I say a little bit of time, I mean a lot of time to get used to, uh, especially if you come from any other 3D software. So I pretty much stay in the um, the new 3D gizmo. Next over is um, um, Sculptress Pro. We will talk about that a little bit later. Um, this comes in very handy when you're sculpting. Um, let's go back. Let's click on Draw. So this will activate some of these other options here. We'll talk about Sculptress Pro a little bit later, um, but just be aware this uh, is a, an option for sculpting. Uh, next up, we have some um, uh, features for our tools here. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll skip over here to the right hand side for just a second. So we have our draw size, which allows us to control our brush. And then we have our focal shift, which allows us to control the fuzziness of this shape. So I can draw here, I can turn my fuzziness up. Turn my draw size up. I can turn my draw size down. I can turn my focal shift down to where it's hard. So now you can see that it's like hard rectangle. But if I turn the fuzziness up, you can see that we get different uh, feels to our brush. Um, then again, this remember dynamic mode. Uh, we're not going to use that right now. Um, We'll, we'll talk about some of that stuff a little bit later. Uh, active points. This basically tells me how big my model is. Right now mine is at um, uh, 100,000 points. Um, and if I have, so this total points is if I have a model that has multiple subtools, uh, this will tell me the overall size of my model. And this one will tell me um, how many points my active tool is. And we'll talk about that in just a little while. All right, so back over to this little bit that we skipped. Okay, this little bit that we skipped here, this section, Z add, Z sub, and intensity, this intensity controls how hard your model or your, um, your tool is pressing into or out of your clay. So you can see that Z intensity. So I can turn this way down. And so whenever I sculpt, you can see it's barely, barely, barely making any um, indentation. If I turn it up, you can see that I'm getting a lot stronger of a sculpt or a stroke. If I click on Z sub, this actually pushes in. We'll talk about how to use these a little bit later. So I can go back to add. And that lets you add. Then what we're going to do is Right now we have our um, our, our uh, color is gray. Uh, these actually deal with painting your object, and we're not going to get into that right now because it can get confusing. Uh, we're just going to worry about the sculpting features, uh, but we will get into painting and stuff with color a little bit later. So that is the top menu.